Hey Buns, you know, people often ask me, how do you have 90 million gil? Like, what do you know that I don't? Are you involved in some kind of shady Bunderworld market? People wonder, especially because I don't do crafting or gathering. And so I guess it's kind of sus, but I think 90 mil, probably more than the average player has, but these are rookie numbers compared to what a lot of people are actually carrying around. I'm just at a point where I don't really feel like I need more, like I have all that I need. So today, I'm gonna give you some tips on how you too can get to this point without crafting, without gathering, just by killing stuff, and in some cases, not even having to do that. First of all, grand company seals. So first things first, you need to rank up in your grand company. If you have been neglecting that, you need to start on that. And I will put a link in the description box down below to a Gamerscape article that tells you exactly what you need for each rank up. A good way to get the Grand Company seals for rank ups is from doing leveling roulette, so that can help you a lot because you need to reach Sergeant Second Class to unlock Expert Deliveries. Now, once you have the Expert Deliveries, you can then turn in any pink, green, or blue quality items that you find in exchange for Grand Company seals. And those seals can be exchanged at the quartermaster for stuff you can sell on the market board. Now, once upon a time, I would have told you to sell Coke, but I mean, I'm trying to be a better example for you, Buns. It's 2021 and also the Coke market kind of crashed, so it's not really worth it. <laughs> Cordials are always a safe bet. So are Glamour Prisms. They always sell. I mean, Glamour Prisms are pretty much like the new Coke. I guess always has been. Next, use your poetics and buy things with poetics that you can sell. Do not cab on poetics. If you cab on poetics, you're literally throwing gill away. Assuming you don't need poetics for anything else, like leveling gear or items for past expansion relics you might want for their glamour, you can spend your poetics on unidentifiable items, like unidentifiable, or to trade for grade three quality soil, either the Thanalan one or the Shroud one. Those sell for a pretty decent price. They are not, in fact, dirt cheap. Next up, retainers. You want to level up your retainers. Your retainer cannot exceed the highest level that you have attained on a job. So if you have a retainer that is a paladin and you only have paladin leveled to 70, then that retainer cannot level above 70 until you also level above 70 because they're like your squire or something. If you're lazy, you can always buy a retainer skip potion on the Mog Station. Retainers are handy because you can send them out on exploration missions, either a long one that takes 18 hours or a quick exploration that only takes one hour. It costs ventures to make them go, and you can get ventures from Beast Tribe quests or from Grand Company Seals. That's actually what I spend a ton of Grand Company Seals on. Basically, they bring you back random stuff all the time. Usually it's crap, but <laughs> a lot of it is green or blue quality items that you can then turn back into the grand company for seals, which you can use to buy ventures, which means more missions, which means more crap. It's like an endless cycle of <laughs> crap. I'm kidding. Okay, but seriously, hear me out. Every once in a while, they'll bring you back something that is actually good and worth like several hundred gil that you can sell for a pretty penny, like some expensive pure white dye or uh, jet black dye. So, I mean, it's a pretty low effort way to make gill without you having to really do anything. Next up, Deep Dungeon. So to get the loot that is actually worth selling from Deep Dungeon, you need to go all the way. You need a group of four people that is willing to go the distance in a fixed party to the deeper floors or higher floors in the case of Havanaut High to get the good loot. So in Palace of the Dead, the mount drop from the best sacks, the best loot sacks only happens from floors 151 and higher. And in Havanaut High, the sacks that drop the mount, the best sacks there are floors 71 and higher. So, I mean, they're rare drops, but worth a good bid. And there's other things that can drop there like glamor items that you can sell on the market board as well. So the farther you go, the better loot sacks drop and the harder it gets. So if you wanna get your hands on the best sacks, you gotta be ready for things to get hard. Anyway, here's a handy guide for navigating the deep dungeons that I will link in the description box down below. Next up, treasure map dungeons. So for this, you need to get a treasure map 
from the market board or you can gather a treasure map once a day if you're a miner or botanist but i thought this video was not about how to do it with crafting or gathering so you for you i guess it's up to the market board once you have one you need to get a group together you can use party finder for this as a treasure hunt category and get a bunch of people together so you can all follow the map to the treasure chest when you open that treasure chest, you will have to find some enemies first, and then a portal may or may not open. It's just RNG. That portal will take you into a treasure map dungeon where progressing from stage to stage is purely RNG, so it's just luck whether you get far or not. But you might be able to get some nice loot and some guilt before you get kicked out. This is a pretty fun and easy way to make gil, but it does require a team of people who will all roll on the loot that drops, assuming that you agreed to all need rules. That's usually what I do when I run treasure maps. If we all agree, everyone roll need, no matter whose map it was that opened the chest, you're all gonna roll need on any treasure chest that we find. But of course this does mean that everybody has a chance at the rare loot that could drop in these chests. So it's not necessarily like an amazing method for long-term reliable gill making, but it can definitely help and it's easy. Like if you can actually schedule a treasure map night with your FC, that could help a lot for some easy money flow. Next up, selling trial materials. So if you farm extreme trials, crafting materials can sometimes drop that you can sell if you're lucky enough to win the roll. Even older trials that you can unsync farm will sometimes drop things that people really want, but it varies a lot from trial to trial. So check your market board to see what is worth going after. Like you don't wanna farm Sephiroth and then find out that the sap he drops is only selling for like 3000 gil. I mean, if you check first, it could suffer out of time. Next up, selling stuff from Baja and Zadnor. So I actually saved the best for last because this is the gill making method that will probably vastly outclass all of the other ways that I've mentioned. This is the way that will actually make you not just stable, but thriving rich. Farming Bajan clusters in the Bajan Southern Front or in Zadnor. This is not a thing that you can do until you have reached max level and progressed far enough in the story to unlock Baja. But once you have unlocked Baja, you can then go to the Bajan Southern Front and later Zadnor and farm the Bajan clusters, which you can then use to buy a giant robot. For example, Construct 14 here sells for 1 million gil. There's also a hairstyle called Wind Collar that you can sell for over a million. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Fragments you can find while well, in these zones can also be sold for a little or a lot depending on the fragment and you will probably just be getting fragments naturally while you're spending time in the Zadnor or at Bajan Southern Front. There are several Discord servers set up just for this so you can sign up for a farm session or you can just hop into the instance and shout, looking for cluster farm. I actually got in touch with Val, who is one of the admins of my local Bajan cluster farming Discord that's called Bajan Farmers. It's on Light Data Center and is also run by Sophia Stella, Lilith Levana, and Ruki Okai. Now, Val gave me a really quick explanation of what cluster farming is and what is involved with it since, well, I've only very casually done it like once and I wanted to hear input from someone who has a lot more experience doing it than me. So Val said that what they normally do is make private party finders for our Discord and Crossworld link shells. So it's password protected party finder just for people that signed up through the Discord or the Crossworld link shell. They find an instance for everyone to join in together and all the party leaders assign all of our six camp spots that we have a map of to all party members. So basically, everyone gets assigned a kill site in each zone that's shown here on this map. You'll meet up with people from our other parties because by simply tagging the mobs, all parties get them. So you only need one person in each camp. So basically, they spread everyone out all over the zone, like, I mean, the big zone, Baja and Southern Front zone, um, for maximum efficiency. So the most people can tag as many mobs as possible. I asked Val how much they tend to make doing this cluster farming, and he said some of our older members in a few months made 100 million gil. He went on to say, per week, you can expect three to five million, I'd say, since you can get like 600 clusters if you stay the full three hours 
of the instance and if RNG is good to you. But keep in mind that patch 5.57 just came out this week and this means that the fragments now cost fewer Bajan clusters that could affect prices when selling the fragments, especially if people are undercutting by a large margin, which Val actually specifically said to me, could you mention that? People should not undercut more than one gill. And I said, well, I, I personally like the 10 gill undercut. I just feel like it's kind of courteous. In addition to cluster farming, you can also just do normal farming of skirmishes and critical engagements, which is also great XP if you happen to be leveling a job 71 plus. And the lockboxes in Zadnor have a chance to drop a hairstyle called Both Ways that's worth about 600k right now, but it's a pretty rare drop. So it could be that you can't have it both ways. Early to Rise is another hairstyle that you can sell with a small chance to drop from Delubrum Regine and it sells for 400k on my server right now. You can also get that one by exchanging 5 Bajan gold coins and 30 platinum coins. The gold coins drop from Delubrum Regine Savage or there's a weekly that you can get them from. The platinum coins drop from the Dalriata of Zadnor. There's also a weekly you can get the platinum coins from. And it should also be noted that 100 silver coins can be exchanged for one gold coin, 100 mithril coins can be exchanged for one platinum coin. <sighs> that is a lot of coins. But hey, pretty soon you will also have a lot of coins if you follow this guide. It's not really a guide, but is it? Tips, tips and tricks. Then you might be able to buy the uh, one of the new gill sink mounts that they added fairly recently, the Great Serpent of Ronka. Gil Sink, what was the other one? Oh, the uh, Namazu. And no one can deny those Namazu certainly have a lot of gills. Hope you liked this video. If you did, then please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support this channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of light. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.